What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Hogwarts Legacy's official rating, at least in the U.S. I mean, it's been rated kind of all over the world over the last couple months, and it seems like finally they decided, well, enough places have rated it. People kind of know it's in a T14 range, even if it's not that specific rating for places across the world. For example, and one we I will talk about here, in Australia, it has an M rating, but I believe it's for moderate impact. It's the third highest, but there's two more, strong impact and high impact. So it's, it's not like an adult rating game. But enough places have done it that Hogwarts Legacy finally did it for themselves, and they posted it on their Twitter and on their official website at the bottom. Now, it contains reasons for why it's T14, and none of them are all that surprising. Um, well, one thing I want to focus on, okay, is the Australian rating board yesterday rated it, so that kind of slipped through a lot of people's mind. Actually, the rating date itself is October 19th. So this was actually last Wednesday, but articles weren't written about it until yesterday, at least the one that I found. And one very interesting tidbit is online interactivity. Now, this is on their, their official, the Australian board website, consumer advice. So this is basically their reasons. What's odd is a lot of the reasons here don't make it, like they're not exactly the same as other places, but supernatural themes, violence, online interactivity, and in-game purchases. Now, to combat the in-game purchases right away, and it could be a similar situation with the online stuff, remember, the in-game stuff is more of a technicality that they have to have that there because you can buy the Dark Arts pack separate from the Deluxe Edition or whatever the editions uh, it comes with. So because you can technically buy, I mean, is it DLC? It's like bonus content. Because you can buy that separate from an edition of the game, it has to be classified as in-game purchases. Chandler has made that very clear. Hogwarts Legacy, uh, you know, themselves, like on their own Twitter, has made that clear. And I don't know if it would be the exact same thing or if it's already been said, and maybe I'm just having a huge gap. You know, I've been covering Gotham Knights a lot recently. Maybe I don't remember. Online interactivity, why is that on there? Now, I would assume, like the first thing I would assume is because you need to go online to get DLC, like in, in a way you're buying the DLC through an online store, the PSN or the Xbox store or Steam or whatever, because you're buying it on those stores, you are buying it from the internet, you're buying it from online. So that's the first thing I would like to uh, go to. I was reading other articles kind of talking about it and they said the same thing, you know, the in-game purchases, that's been covered, that's understood what they mean by that. And, and But here's the thing. See, Gotham Knights did kind of the same thing. Gotham Knights also had in-game purchases uh, because of like the microtransactions, and that was because of the same reason as, as Hogwarts. But Gotham Knights very easily can have DLC. You can see it built straight into the DNA of that game. And trust me, I know. Um, and so I do think there will be DLC for the game. So what's interesting about this for Hogwarts, and it's always been interesting, is it's kind of a cop-out, like, they're kind of saying, I, I would say that even about Chandler right now, I'm not picking on them, I'm saying, like, it kind of works well for them to say it now, where they could easily change it in the future, where they say, well, you know, the in-game purchases, when we put that on there, we meant because of the Dark Arts pack, but coincidentally, we had DLC in mind as well, that we're gonna, like, and I, and I really think that's possible that they could do that, so you have that, but the online part, again, that's the, that's the interesting one, so, so gut feeling for online is because you can buy the DLC or you can oh, well again like is DLC the right word you can buy the bonus pack stuff and because you can do that and because you can you have to go online to do it that's why it's on there uh, but yet again why wouldn't that be why is that like a separate thing see I don't know enough about the Australian ratings board and I don't know if this is the only place that it is up you guys if you saw anything you'll have to let me know um, in the comments so I don't know does it leave the door open for wizard's chess or you know some sort of multiplayer thing i mean honestly in the same way that in-game purchases is kind of ambiguous and although it's used now to talk about getting you know like robes and small things like that it could be used in the future to talk about like a 20-hour dlc that you have to buy so it's kind of ambiguous where you can use it for both reasons i wonder if online interactivity is the same thing well they're using it now because you have to go online to buy the stuff but you know what we really mean or what we will mean down the line and again here's the thing when you rate a game, 
they don't take that stuff into consideration. So that's something to remember. I'm just kind of talking about what they could do in the future. But when they rate, when Australia or the US or whatever, when they rate a game, they basically get like a snapshot of what the game is. You have to like provide them like documents of, of what the game contains so they can give a rating. And if they don't feel comfortable, they actually have to ask for more of the game. You may have to send them parts of the game so they can see it. That's how the rating systems um, end up working. So the online Online interactivity is just based off what they know right now so it could be just because you have to go to the store but maybe Avalanche is saying well you know in the future maybe we could add a little you know extra DLC or an extra like a ghost of Tsushima thing that would be a online kind of mode right so we'll see what happens but let me know if you guys have any ideas or thoughts that are different from mine or the same as mine um, in the comments below make sure you guys are subscribed bell icon turned on so you know when all these videos go up if you want to follow or support me anywhere else all my social media links are in the description along with our patreon and youtube membership is that join button next to the subscribe button an additional way to help the channel out thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all on the next one